Okay. So good afternoon with everyone. My name is Diego Alcazar. And today I will be talking about an algorithm developed by people in DeepMind called multi-agent actocritic for mixed uh, cooperative competitive environments. First, I will go through a short review of, you know, of reinforcement learning and the problems of the cure when we expand it to a multi-agent framework. Then we describe the algorithm. Uh, uh, I will show the results. And so the first, well, we know we model reinforcement learning as a Markov decision process. Uh, determined by an environment or a system and an agent with, that interacts with the system, taking actions and receiving uh, new states and rewards uh, by a work function that is determined as, uh, as a function of the, state, the current state, the action taken at the new state. When we try to expand this to a multi-agent system, this is not possible because of a lack of stationarity. Then uh, uh, every MDP assumes that the Markovian pr uh, property holds, uh, which means that the conditional PDF of the future state depends only on the current state and the action taken. When we go to multi-agent system, this doesn't happen because this will also depend on the actions of the other agents. Uh, so it can be so then it can be modeled as a Markov game, as as shown in this figure. The system is, is changed by the actions of every agent, and each has access to the new state and, and a different reward. So in, in reinforcement learning, we try, the objective is that the agents learn a policy that is a mapping from the state space to a distribution over the action space that maximizes expected discounted reward. And for that, we define an action value function, define that this expected reward when we take a, a specific action under a, a specific initial state and then follow a specific policy uh, and a state value function we, we, when we simply uh, follow a policy starting an initial state. The optimal policies correspond to those that maximize these two functions. Now, uh, in policy gradient, we approximate uh, the policy by a set of parameters theta and update it in the direction of the gradient using, uh, using different optimization approaches, for which for a performance function it defined as the state value function, uh, we get some, we can show that we obtain something like this, like the gradient is expected value of the state action value times the gradient of the log of the policy. Uh, algorithms with approximations to both the policy and values and the value functions here in Q uh, are called actor critical methods. And in deterministic policy gradient, we expand this uh, notion to, to uh, deterministic policies. That is when the mapping is from state space directly to, to an action space, when the probability collapses to one. So when that happens, the gradient becomes expected value of the gradient uh, of the state uh, of the Q function and the gradient of the deterministic policy. In, this, in deep deterministic policy gradient, both the policy mu uh, that again is deterministic and the critic Q are approximated, approximated using neural networks. This is an off policy algorithm that employs a replay buffer. Our buffer is a space of memory where the transitions are stored and then they are sampled to, to avoid correlations. Now, the central idea of this, uh, of MADDPG is that since the new state also depends on other agents, their world also depends on other agent policies. So to, to deal with this, the authors employed an appro approach based on a centralized critic but decentralized execution so in this figure, I have tried to, to figure what's going on, to show what's going on. During training, uh, the queue of every uh, agent will have access to the policies of all the agents. Uh, this is in green, but during execution, that doesn't occur. And the policies of each agent are uh, executed uh, by themselves. So this means that during training, yeah. Uh, each, Okay, so to update the critic. Uh, sorry, could you go back? This is not clear to me. So, what do you mean by like uh, centralized critic and decentralized execution? 
Uh, yeah, I mean that during training, uh, the critics, every agent has its own critic and its own actor. So during training, each uh, the critic of all the agents has access to all the information. It has access to the to the policies of, of itself and the policies of all the other agents. But when it's time for execution, the agent only doesn't have access to, to the policies of, of the other agents. It works only with the, its own policies. Okay, so during uh, execution, it's only uh, only use its own policy. Yes. But during training, it uh, not only use its own policy, but it also have access yes. to other agents' policy. Okay. Yeah. We yeah. So please go into more detail. How how did they did he do that? Uh. Like, what they, do you mean by have access? Like that the, <laughs> that the Q function, the, 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 each of the Q functions depends, takes as input. Um, the, I mean, it takes, as, it takes in consideration the actions and the states of all the agents. So it can observe all the agents. Uh, it only observe, so, but is that a function of that? Is the Q as Yes, a it is a function, yes. It is a function. Okay. okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So it, 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 actually, one of the drawbacks is that uh, of this algorithm is that it, since it, it adds, it considers all the functions, mm -hmm. uh, the the space, the input space for the Q functions uh, grow linearly. So yeah, you see, like because the number of agents is, uh, yeah. if you have more agent hits, uh, it becomes very large. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. So, uh, to update the critic, we, we consider if we consider any agents, each with its own deterministic policy and its own centralized action value function. Uh, when I say own centralized uh, action value function, it doesn't mean that everyone has a own Q value, Q function. It can be different for everyone. So this allows to, to have different reward functions too. So then they use the last function similar uh, to the one used in Q-learning where we, uh, they consider expected value of the Q, uh, the Q function minus the target and the target is given by, uh, is a term in using uh, previous, uh, previous values of the, of the Q function. Um, so in that sense, it's similar to, to what they see in Q-learning. Then uh, the uh, actors argue that if it if we cannot uh, assume that the uh, the agents have access to the to the to the policies of all the agents, then we can they can use approximations for the policy of of, of the other agents. So here they approximate they use approximation mu uh, phi j i j that that represents the approximation of policy mu. Uh, of agent I or, or for uh, agent J. We, they use an entropy regularizer. Um, and then the target becomes, the target for in this equation six becomes uh, this, there's uh, this addition equation, equation eight. They analyze it, <coughs> the, the influence of this and they show that there is no difference in, in the average reward. So then to update the actor, we use, uh, you know, well, the critic is used to, to update the actor using what I've shown before. And here the gradient uh, is equal to this, as I said before. And uh, also they argue that this non-stationarity represents a, a challenging task in competitive frameworks where agents may overfit to the other agents' behaviors. So what the authors propose to avoid this is that each agent uses an ensemble of case of policies for each agent. And at every episode, each agent randomly chooses one of its, of its case of policies to, to employ. So then you know, uh, they analyze this and they compare in different scenarios. Uh, keep a, these are different environments. And they compare here ensemble versus ensemble. This is uh, the performance, the score is, is similar, 
But when they compare uh, ensemble versus single, they see that the agent score is much higher. So this shows that they are they are improving the, the, the performance using, using this approach. Now here is the algorithm. Um, well, first they initialize a random process, they receive the initial state, they obtain the actions using um, they select the actions using the deterministic policies and adding some noise for exploration. Uh, execute the actions. They store these transitions in a replay buffer. Then the new state becomes the old state. And for each agent, they sample a, a random mini batch, uh, which, by the way, when, when we're using an ensemble of policies, there's a mini, a mini batch for each of the, of the, of the sub policies. Then they set the target, they update the critic, and update the, the actor. Finally, eh, they update the target, eh, the target parameters for, for each agent. So for the results, they can see they use the Adam optimizer with a learning rate of 0 0.01. A step size is also of 0 0.01 for, eh, for the optimization step. The discount is set to be 0 0.95 and the size of the replay buffer is 10 to the six. And they update the network after every 100 samples um, and you use a replay buffer of 1,024. So they consider different environments, but they only compare with uh, all these algorithms in one of them. And this environment is uh, one in which there is a speaker, there's a listener, and there are three landmarks of different colors. In each episode, the listener moves to one landmark and gets a reward depending on how far it is from the correct landmark. And nevertheless, only the speaker, not the listener, knows which uh, the correct landmark is. So the speaker can send a message to the listener at each time step. And when they compare the performance using different algorithms, they show that MADDBG is superior to all of them, including DDPG, Deep Learning, Actocritic, uh, TRPO, and Reinforce. So as a conclusion, um, the authors have developed an algorithm that one uses only local information at, at execution times. It makes no assumption either of a referential model of, or uh, environment dynamics or of any communication method, and is applicable to cooperative and competitive frameworks. And again, this occurs because each agent can, has it, can have its own reward function. Uh, here is a short video of what they achieved. Where is it? So I will just show it. So here is, is, we can see how it goes to the correct uh, landmark. It has to go to the blue here. And this is with a different algorithm, with DDPG. But then it doesn't go to the correct landmark. 